All right, we're still going on. We're still wor worrying about all kinds of things. We're not living life. And there was no reason for it. There was no reason to put up with a bunch of anything. And yet we did. And so I don't know what more to say. I don't understand really what more to encourage people with. The answers are really pretty much right in front of us. And even though we have, people will find this out, another obstacle once you get engaged, more people that are doing this, we're going to blow right through that obstacle as well. And a lot of it is our, our ignorance in a, the very system that we would say allows us to live the lifestyle or did allow us to live the lifestyle and promote that a lifestyle, the ability to give lip service essentially of ultimately to it to con can have be contained now in a condition that is really allowed because we do not respond. Interrupting the current neo-coronial cricketism to bring you behind the woodshed. This is Cricketude Busting episode BTWRLM394. I just don't know what the... You almost go blank right there. Folks, you've got to be the storm behind the woodshed. You bring the miscreant behind the woodshed, that official miscreant. As I said, I stated last night on the, on the Twitter in response... Fraud is not a warrant to restrain your liberty. And I don't know how much simpler I need. I can say the entirety of a complaint if you weren't facing the other obstruction, which can be dealt with, which you have to understand it's there, which is the system itself that doesn't want to hear that. And a lot of you that has done this in the past know about that. And in fact, I've been saying you're actually better placed than most people to be able to Step back in and show people how to avoid that. If you learned those things, and if you were able to anticipate that in the future, you, in fact, I've told you, you look into the future. You, you, you have your own crystal ball, if you will. You can see because this creature that we're up against that is doing this to us all, I say us all, I really, I still haven't been affected by this thing. I don't know what it is. I go where I go. I don't even consider it otherwise. I don't, I don't have, I don't engage to even have it be a problem. In fact, I've been looking for people I can help because I can't find the problem for myself. It hasn't shown itself to me directly yet. I told you, for at least from my perspective, it would be dealing with the the infantiles that are around that do agree that believe in it. And that's a, an indirect effect, and that's something that you may or may not be able to deal with at some point. I've decided that I'm not going to argue with my fellow man over over lunacy. Or woman, actually. They both, they both want to give you a lip sometime, but it, there's nearly nothing to say. And we're allowing this on ourselves. I've been bringing you I, my view, if you will, even if it's my opinion on how this thing gets killed. This thing against us is killed. It's critical to... The transformation that's been going on for decades and decades in this society, what I've been telling you for years, has put itself inside the law in order to one day be sprung on you. Part of which I, I've identified in a couple state rules that they brought in agreeing with a foreign, author, um, not even authority, they called them an authority that isn't, to affect your life. I've explained how they take your property rights. Everyone that has a house or has pays rent to someone who has to pay a ta property tax, not just that they're, they've mischaracterized your land as a marketable land, which it's not. It's actually a patent land. They mischaracterize that it's subject to the tax, and then they allow the, leg the legislature allows unto itself the ability to exact from the property owner the very things and so-called money they're using in the so-called treasury in order to do this very stuff against you. And I, I, we've identified that way back in 2013 in a lawsuit, Jefferson Money District versus the state uh, governor. It's not like we've been here. We asserted sustainable development as the treason as well, and they defaulted all that. So this is not even old, uh, old even new news, what we're up against with this so-called COVID. And before I move on too much further, I think it was on a UCY.TV YouTube account, Thank you, Jules, for doing that for us, Get letting people hear the information behind the woodshed, even though maybe not many 
people are that interested. There is a handful. And Michelle Long, thank you so much, she says, for uh, your no-nonsense message. I will stand up and show you uh, show up every single day for freedom. Well, exactly. Don't just stand up. Actually get to action. Thank you very much for the, for the appreciation. I hope I don't have any other thought than to bring you a no-nonsense approach. I am uh, real, was really more con- glad to see that, that that is coming out. For as much as I might talk about it, as diverse as it sounds, and I try to bring you themes and things to look at to be able to attach an idea that may get you motivated to work on something that interests you. Because we all know if you're not interested in something, you're likely not to do a very good job with it or not stick with it too long. And so something about this has to really affect you. And then it, it's like, it, then every obstacle becomes the enemy against you and the ones that wield it become the criminals. And it's, if you, once you start to see this, because they are, we're really talking only in the official sense because everybody else is just another guy down the street. We are able to then, if you will, get righteously indignant. And then there's a way to do that as well. And I don't make those rules. It's just a, it's the, fallen nature of people that were were given to us a long time ago to know about and if we don't regard ourselves of those well we just it just comes into a rougher time the people that are deciding that want to call you their leaders they think they've earned something and so you got to speak through that arrogance and that's why i say bring the black and white because normally they don't know what that is in fact, I'm helping someone make legislation, hopefully, uh, that's going to stop this thing. It'll probably be the first time I've heard about it in the state. We're going to try and stop it. Bringing particular language into legislation has been a very interesting process. It's interesting the lawyers behind the scenes don't like it. If you want to understand continually who the one of the enemies is that you will face as you step into this, that we must face to, to destroy. I want to move off completely different for a while, for a bit here. And I have these tabs that I've been having for almost a year. Here, I'll read this one. It's on the 20th of November of 2019. Here's a year, a year back. I was going to talk about this and never got to it. But it, it started, it starts up a, a theme today about why we even agree to hear these people that call themselves scientists or whoever, experts or whatever they are. And again, another example. To me, it's not just that we dis. If they were not affecting our lives, we wouldn't care. Because they're affecting our lives, we now have to. If we have, I get, to my mind, any, if we have any responsibility to ourselves. So I bring, I find these pieces of information, I pull them together, the notice to us about what's going on. That we now can see, I think most people can clearly, see, well, I guess I can't say that either. Some people clearly see how what's presented is used as a weapon against us. And there's, we haven't been integrated as people within a society to counter that. And we thought we could leave it to some others that who we thought had our best interest in, in mind. Well, they have an interest, but it's not necessarily yours because we didn't notice they called, they called people the problem. And they divorced themselves. These people are so insane. They divorced themselves from being the people themselves that are causing their own problem. And so then they made themselves the, gatekeepers of humanity i don't know what gave again as i was thinking this morning who gave these people the title even if we consider that there's animals out there that they were the farmers over where did they buy those animals those humans in order to become the husbandman over them is uh for is, well, it gives you an insight of what i think about uh, how do we get at this problem how do we get at these people to cut short their ability to have any air relative to what they think where they've come without their title because in the united states of america it's really focused on title if we would just get that title is all important and title bestowed by certain organic documents and such is all important it is important and when you understand that and you start asserting when a trust pass to that or the exposure that someone doesn't have a title that they can bring and you see that in those extortion and coercion statutes and i've been telling you to go look at when you have an official coming under a color of authority to come and interfere with you and your property or rights or they take that those rights and property and hand them to a third party without title they've these officials have created a crime felonies 
by either commission or omission. Right in there, you see title is required. You see the right to a property has to be identified. And so if we would just start focusing on the simple things. We'll start to realize, in the United States of America at least, and, and I think really everywhere that has rule of law and democracy brand of oppression, you're going to see the thread of all this. So when I'm talking to the Kanukistan or the UK or Australia, that's why I can jump around pretty quick. And I think I've been really accurate and very, if, if there has been error, I certainly haven't been talked to. The uh, celebstitutes that are out there that get a whole lot more viewership and talk a whole lot and t want to talk, tell tales to you about the crime against you instead of coming up with how to resolve that against you if you were, didn't know, or you yourself not even stepping up, rolling up your sleeves in and being responsible to your own self and protecting you, and yours, and your family, and your friends, maybe. Maybe not as your brother's keeper so much, but if you have a bunch of people around you that are not getting in and getting harmed, and you're the only one that's, that's there, you better protect yourself, and that's going to reflect back out. It's that example thing. That none of these celebstitutes that are out there that have a great, great following, and a lot of them I admire, I admire that they're out there talking, but I'm looking very, uh, I'm looking for where, where is the help? And it just, in a way, it just doesn't exist. And this just is how dire our societies around the world are. Anyway, getting into where I want to go, we have a, a, a class of priests, if you will. They come under the title of scientists. We're, we know they're now technologists, not scientists. They use the technology in order to advance their claim of stewardship husbandmanship over humanity, the animals, that you agree to when you don't step up as men and women, which are dis distinct and different. You'll never find, you won't find, it's funny, interesting, people kind of dismiss this. The organic constitutions will, will talk to men, and no, dis no disrespect to the women here, but that's been adjusted, but they don't talk to human. In fact, you look at the Bible, it doesn't talk to human, unless you're in the humanist Bible. And so there's these, I tell you, these terms are, are critical in keeping track. And I learned the importance of this when I got into mining law, and I started looking at title and evidence of title and what it is and grants and all that stuff I talked to you back over and over and over. So you have to get over time this foundation of the absoluteness of the chasm that's between organic, lawful things and legal, the made-up things. And then you, once you get that, then we can start to get into the this ideas that Things legal have their force and effect, and they have things in legal arenas, which would be our interaction within a system that is purporting to be a neutral body, which we then find out is that other obstruction that it's not. So then, so there's people have a problem once you, if you don't really understand this distinction, you, know, you can articulate that legal law is not legal, but you don't understand the function of it. That at some point you can, you, it's not a, a thing to worry about that you can blend statutory type of provisions that help to protect things of the organic things of men and women. In other words, in a neutral way, when you have a statutory provision of that's provided for a statute of limitations, a presumption of something being done, and a statute of limitations against uh, encroachment, you can use that without it being illegal or not lawful. it's All it is is an agreement that whoever's going to sit there and make the decision can use that, will use that, as a presumption until, it, until it's overthrown, to extend as a benefit to somebody in a controversy. And so the, you, you got to, not only do we learn the difference between law and legal, and they're not the same, but there is and not a blending, it's a utility, because the law, legal can be a tool. This is where people get all messed up about fictions. There's all kinds of fictions and legal, but they do that because if you don't do that, you have serious problems that can't be resolved without those. Presumptions are a bit of a fiction, but they're there because of long-term problems that had to be resolved. Now, what I've learned is that, and, and maybe inordinately, the presumptions have begun seemingly in favor of a state which should have never been a party. Should have never had its its standard put on us, but we've allowed that. This is another silence that we've had. That when it's used as a weapon, it becomes problematic. But even so, when you understand that is there, you learn to address them. That's why one of the standards I hold to myself, and when I'm advising anybody on suggesting my observations to what they 
might consider to do relative to what they find in their locale where they live in the in the rule set that they have is to make sure you follow the black and white because that removes that addresses all the presumptions that would be used silently against you and so this this presumption of right this presumption of title against us it allows people to do things and in some regard, like we get into science, even technology is fascinating stuff. It's just a, a wonder what we can do as people. But the problem is we don't know who ends up wielding the technology. And we're finding out very clearly, uh, those of us that, that pay attention have, we find out that the seemingly the worst people get involved with the and use these, these tools to the worst case. The PCR is, is a prime example. That rises immediately to the highest levels of government in position and power, that they're misusing these tools. Fraud is not a warrant for a restraint of liberty. It should be pretty simple to, to lay down in a in a complaint. Now, as I said that before. Let me move on to now. What got me with these tabs that I was gonna I'm gonna talk about here. In this case, exclusive humans placed in suspended am, animation for the first time, like last year's story. But it's coming and creeping back in because of the way the news cycle works and trying to tell you you're 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 caught in this situation. We're letting you know that so that we don't ever have to feel the burn of conscience, consciousness that conscience that maybe we you didn't know. So we're going to accept that if you don't say uncle, you you agree. Exclusive exclusive humans are placed in suspended animation for the first time. Again, the technology is really fascinating. The initial reason why they do this is you again, as I've told you, it's the good reason why. The problem I find in these reports to us, these notices, are they're telling you what's coming in the future, and you don't know in the future beyond which this fantastic technology to help solve a problem, a real problem, help each one of you potentially actually gets grabbed up by those and utilized for their psychotic needs. We read to hear the story. Interesting, just suspended, people being suspended, but notice they say humans. Not mankind can be suspended. This is, doctors have placed humans in suspended animation. Later, they're also going to say the tests were done on pigs to allow this to be seen. You farm animals, you. But notwithstanding that, fascinating technology. Humans are in suspended animation for the first time as part of a trial in the U.S. that aims to make it possible to fix traumatic injuries that would otherwise cause death. Samuel Tisherman at the University of Maryland School of Medicine told New Scientist that his team of medics had been had placed at least one patient in suspended animation, calling it, quote, a little surreal when they first did it. He wouldn't reveal how many people had survived as a result. The technique, officially called the Emergency Preservation and Resuscitation, EPR, is being carried out on people who arrive at the University of Maryland Medical Center in Baltimore with an acute trauma, such as a gunshot or stab wound, and have had a cardiac arrest. Their heart will have stopped beating, and they will have lost more than half their blood. There are only minutes to operate with a less than 5% chance that would normally survive, that they would normally survive. EPR involves rapid cooling of a person to around 10 to 15 degrees centigrade by replacing all of their blood with ice-cold saline. The patient's brain activity almost completely stops. They are then disconnected from the cooling system and their body, which would otherwise be classified as dead, is moved to the operating theater. I want to focus a bit of more time on that. They, you would otherwise be classified as dead. And I want you to consider the legal consequence of being determined dead. And then who has the body? And we think this is, again, this is where the creepiness starts to come in. If you're determined dead, and they revive you, who owns your zombiness afterwards? Going on here, without oxygen, our brain can only survive about five minutes before irreversible damage. And this uh, this uh, extends their window of being able to help you when you have a trauma. However, you hear you're literally technically dead. 
the trial was given the go-ahead by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The FDA made it exempt from needing patient consent as the patient's injuries are likely to be fatal and there is no alternative treatment. The team had discussions with the local community and placed ads in newspapers describing the trial, pointing people to a website where they can opt out. I, want, I hope some of you really keyed in on what is the dynamic here. They literally think that you are domesticated animals. As long as you have a bit of consciousness, then you have the requirement to opt out in that system that is supposed to be under law. But they've deemed you to be their property, the FDA did, in order to go ahead and take away your consent in that moment. They've essentially taken out a will against you. They've taken their, the FDA owns you for medical care. And then they point to you to a website where they can opt out. What if you're not connected to the system? It's speaking to the future. And your social credit and your social connections and all your, whatever they're going to tie together with the system, this digital system that runs all on so-called AI. The team had discussions with the local community and placed ads in newspapers describing the trial. So it says that's like direct democracy. The, the people who showed up have a right to say. This is also alternative dispute resolution relative to the process uh, of the adjunct policy being interpreted. The FDA allowed this. Why would they also allow it? Because the, you're considered dead. They actually don't even have jurisdiction. There's no, there's no law stopping. There's no law applicable here unless there's a law. And this is where we would have to start engaging ourselves again, which I don't, I won't see. If people can't get rid of a fraud like COVID from them, affecting them directly in life, they will have no interest to do this in death or their death or the future death of someone else that they have no control over. Injuries that will be likely be fatal, likely, and there's no alternative treatment is really that risk management thing as, as well. You're seeing a lot in this paragraph. It's kind of terrifying to me a bit when I look at it this way. The government has possession and taking control at this point. And I think some of us need to think, if those, those of us that have a, my, some free time, which I'm really getting less and less of to think about, people need to start thinking about how, how the, what the dynamic is that the FDA allowed onto itself to determine for you or these people in that area. Going on, Tisherman's interest of, in trauma research was ignited by an early incident in his career in which a young man was stabbed in the heart after an altercation over bowling shoes. Quote, he was, healthy, he was a healthy young man just minutes before, then suddenly he was dead. We could have saved him if we'd had enough time, he said. This led him to start investigating ways in which cooling might allow surgeons for the time, for more time to do their job. An admirable, without getting into admiralty, an admirable objective. But I can tell you this stuff doesn't stop there, and you know that it doesn't stop there. Remember again, they said he was dead. He was suddenly dead. He's not here. He doesn't exist, and he's not legal no more. He's not lawful. He's legally going to be, can be treated elsewise as what I think here the silent terror is. To clarify this, Mr. Tisherman says, I, I want to make it clear that we're not trying to send the people off to Saturn, he said. We're trying to buy ourselves time, more time to save lives. So they're driving that point home, which is perfect. That would be great. We can help people. And yet you get down to the last paragraph and you see the punchline. Ariane Lewis, director of the Division of Neurocritical Care at NYU Langone, Langone, Langone Health, said she thought it was important work, but that it was just first steps. Quote, we have to see whether it works, and then we can start to think about how and where we can use it. How and where we see it's open-ended now. They opened up the Pandora's box. They have control. You don't have a say at all. You're dead anyway. They bring you back to life and then do what with you while you're dead? Once someone like this Ariane Lewis gets a hold of you with their designs. And if you don't understand, if you can't look into the past here just this last year to see what lunatics are out there to do whatever, and even right before that, remember we had those twins and stuff, the embryonic stem cell or whatever 
CRISPR technology, which I'm going to get here too. And they stick you underneath a, as a dead corpse body, just a hunk of meat. And they get to work on you because they're going to make you better. I think you, we need to start looking at this as well. Prime editing scientists unveil a new tool to destroy genetic diseases. It's also a very old story. I never got to it. So I always got, it's always sitting there would be the next story I would usually talk about in lots of broadcasts. Is what I'm focusing back on as it comes back up in the news as we move through this week. It was once limited to the realm of a mad scientist in scary movies, but the potential to alter a living human's genes to eradicate disease is almost within our grasp thanks to new cutting-edge gene editing tool. And this is back to the current state-of-the-art gene editing tool known as CRISPR-Cas9. is extremely powerful, but its lack of precision, high error rate, and limited scope hamper its ability to treat human genetic diseases. And I was going to play you a skipping record right here at the point. A realm of mad scientists. After you read the last little extension onto the technology of human suspended animation, excuse me, and what the people who claim to want to help you are willing to do to extend what the what they might be able to try and do for you brought up. We understand that they have stem cell thing uh, technology. We have this CRISPR. They always want to make you better. Look what they're doing with the COVID relative to so-called the SARS-CoV-2, which may have been used, uh, this CRISPR may have been used to create, if it's real. I don't even, I don't think it's real. I don't have any evidence anywhere to say it's actually real. It's like a, again, it's a, it's an ongoing model, and we'll see a bit about that in a moment. But way back, they were talking about gene- this CRISPR technology. I was telling you about it. It's popping back up. I want to put it in the context now. When they control you, when they have decided, someone has decided. Right now, it's just at the point five minutes before death, and there's nothing else they could do for you. That window, I've told you, they just expand that window. They're not, they're now opening in the same article. They're going to expand this to wherever it's useful. And if the government is already agreeing you're just an animal to be affected, and they get you into condition, and we've seen tons of this with COVID where they get you into a near death experience, then they come in with their, their largesse and benefit to help you. We see this stuff like CRISPR-Cas9, which they say is a powerful tool, even though back then they were admitting it was lack of precision. And I've been through a lot of reports telling you why and the, and the collateral consequences, the damaging consequences of using that technology. That there's nothing, if you start to tie all this technology together, there's nothing to keep someone who has a better idea about the world and wants to transform her Form your world to a better place from using all this technology to do something. The, psych- the psychopathy of which would want to get you into this, accelerate your capacity to get you there, so they could go ahead and make the world a better place. It's, I guess that's the theme that I was thinking this as I was seeing all this stuff, this story here in particular, reminding us uh, the supposed powerful tool is really just a hack. It's a hack job. It's a bone saw used on to, to cut, cut, make a surgery work. Lab tests show risks of using CRISPR gene editing on embryos is uh, came back out. And interestingly, referring back to China again with this situation going on with the so-called Wuhan. And to me, just without getting lost in, I just want to refocus you. It doesn't matter what happened anywhere else, but in your locale, in your county, there had to be evidence produced for this. It doesn't matter if they referenced anything outside of the local jurisdiction that was irrelevant to support an order. So the orders are are unsupportable, and they can't use fraud to cause any restraint. I don't care whether they want to get, move it over into quarantining unsick people or even maintaining the original law. That this story comes up uh, interestingly now. Uh, a lab experiment am- aiming to, aimed at fixing defective DNA in human endorish shows what can go wrong with this type of gene editing and why leading scientists say it's too unsafe to try. And more than half of the cases editing uh, cause unintended changes, such as loss of an entire cro- chromosome by big chunks of it. 
Columbia University researchers described their work Thursday in the journal Cell that used CRISPR-Cas9 in the same chemical tool that the Chinese scientists used in embryos in 2018 to make the world's first gene-edited babies, which landed him in prison and drew international scorn, we are told. The uh, addition, by emphasis, the tool lets scientists cut DNA in precise spot and it was has profound potential for good. Now, isn't that just like the other story? We're going to put you in suspended animation because it's for potential good. It's already used to raise better crops and livestock and holds promise at treating diseases and earns its discoverers a Nobel Peace Prize earlier this month. But has it all been proven to be better? So be careful even in this notice. And another thing is we find the Nobel Peace Prize is a political prize. Remember, Obama was killed more people with drones than anybody else after he got it. We also find, like, patents. Pat, you can get a patent on something, an intellectual property patent, that you invented something. doesn't mean it has to work. It just has to mean the idea was novel. And so this is the kind of thing you start watching your, your the illusion around your world going on with this story. But, it, but using it on embryo, sperm, and eggs makes changes that pass for generations. Several international panels of scientists and ethicists have have said it's too soon to know whether that, that it can be done safely, and the new Columbia works shows the possible harm. Now, they're trying to focus specifically on human embryos. I want us to relieve ourselves of that limitation, and I'm going to, as I said before, stop the limitation on, oh, it only harms people. This is harming and creates unintended consequences on everything it touches genetically. That would be including your food, all the stuff they say that it's benefiting, has never been tested for anything. And now we're finding out, as I told you, this COVID is exposing the the nakedness of these priests. They operate on nothing but conjecture and your confidence. And as long as you don't say no, like you said, the FDA took authority over you human animals and said, unless you go get a device to get to the website and tell us no, if we find you in our medical clinic, we're going to do this to you and you don't have a say. But they are now showing in a study these unintended consequences I spoke about what, a year ago, years ago. I don't even know how long it's been. Time just seems to fly along. And I wanted to point out something that I haven't been able to get to as well, but it kind of it fell in here as together. You want to know why are they so wrong? Why, but why so arrogant too? But the, the arrogance comes from, I think, a, a sociopathy of some sort. It's not, it's not grounded at all. Neither here nor there. What are they actually speaking to? Comes in a word that I think helps us to understand these technologists and how they do what to us what they're doing and allows us, when we understand that method, to throw that out as a fraud. Again, the official that you're you're now under, in prison, quarantined over with, even if you're sick, not sick, then your whole life has now been altered and it's transforming as you as you scream and yell against it. it it's happening anyway. As I say, you can't just say no on this one. You just can't say no. It's not my rule, not because I want it that way. You can say no, but it's impotent, as I wrote again in Twitter last night. We might get to that. Maybe we won't. I don't remember which one I put up. This word, this thing, this technology that they're using, you've heard it already about the computer this and the and it, precisely, but it's imprecise. It's not. It has collateral damage. Stems from a some uh, so, sort of a con consideration that is given license to be authority. The term I ran across here months and months ago is called bioinformatics. And you'll see this correlates with all this other stories that you'll hear about them helping you in the medicines and them helping you in analyzing and studying and anticipating things like so-called SARS-CoV-2. It also predicts SARS-CoV-2, not as a real thing, but as the model that you are hearing that it actually probably is. And again, I'm saying this, and I have to say it that way. I told you in, back in January, be careful of the needle of the haystack of, of noise. You're going to be getting information that's coming at us here. I told you this. That the needle is the real thing. 
All this other stuff is a cover for that. And I said they may or may not trigger, if they're doing this, they may or may not trigger here in the fall. Or at that time. Now, it seems to me they've still got it handled that they think the flu, most people are convinced the flu is, is, is this special novel thing, and it's not. And there's no evidence of it. So anybody that wants to argue with me, I need to see your test. FDA says there's no test. CDC says no, you're, there's no test. The WHO hasn't identified it. No scientist really can identify it. There's plenty of stories, and I'll maybe bring it up. They just have not identified the actual real thing. And there's a way to do that, and they haven't. So the absence of that evidence proves fraud because it's their duty, as we find out in your statute. Every one of your state statutes says that they have to identify. So when they present themselves that they found something or make a comment that they have something to base it on and they have, don't have it, that's just outright fraud. If they switch words and things in their documents, that's fraud. And how fraud can be a lawful restraint, and you, none of you have really stepped up to defend yourself against that, what I've said is the simplest way to go would be the habeas corpus is telling on us as a society. We're not, we're not our, our great-grandfather's people, we're, and we're not better because of that, I don't think. We're not hyper-vigilant on these encroachments to the extent the whole world is now being... It's the same, no matter what your rule of law is, no matter whether you have it or not, it's all the same. Getting back to what they do with this medical stuff, it's called... Well, a word, bio, bioinformatics, is an interdisciplinary field that develops methods and software tools for understanding, understanding here. How arrogant is this? Biological data, in particular that the data sets are large and complex. As an interdisciplinary field of science, bioinformatics combines biology, computer science, information engineering, mathematics, and statistics to analyze and interpret the biological data. It is not science, folks. I don't care what they say. It's not science, but this is what they call it. This is what they set up, so you think it's all important. Bioinformatics has been used in, a, in silico analysis of biological queries using mathematical and statistical techniques. That's PCR. It doesn't identify anything. It's just a process and a technique. Bioinformatics includes, I mean, go, don't underestimate the word interdisciplinary here. This is sustainable development. They attempt to bring everybody together to do what? Gain consensus. And that makes it so. It doesn't make it reality. It makes it so for the human, human control and human condition to be able to get, put men and women in a state of mind that allows them to hand over to someone without title the control of the men and the women's lives that are being counter, adversely affected. Bioinformatics includes biological studies that use computer programming as part of the methodology as well as specific analysis of pipelines that are repeatedly used, particularly in the fields of genomics. Common uses of bioinformatics include the identification of candidates, genes, and single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs. Often such indication is made with the aim of better understanding the genetic basis of disease, unique adapters, desirable properties, especially in agricultural species or differences between populations, is not referenced in the other article regarding the impreciseness of it, is it? Understanding the genetic basis for disease. Do they really understand? Or is this like cosmology? Make it up. We'll just keep justifying ourselves, and long no one keep looking real close. We'll just kind of push it along. We move down. It also plays a role in the analysis of gene and protein expression and regulation. It plays a role. So it's not everything in the world. It's a part, and it should be as of a tool, so it's not really valuable, actually, on its own. And it may, as I see, as I've been reading, when you read this, you'll realize how inconsequential it is to reality. They never speak to it. No, they focus on the models they create. Somebody programs a computer for an outcome. Now, I'm not saying the tools are not helpful, but they're not something that has given all this technology, has not helped in CRISPR, has not helped in understanding about creating the, the ability to know about a body that needs to be put in suspended animation, and they're just at the idea that they're doing some experiments to find that out. They don't know, even though they're using all the same bioinformatics. 
bioinformatics tools aid in comparing, analyzing, and interpreting of gene and genomic data, and more generally in the understanding of evolutionary aspects of molecular biology. Well, if that was truly the case, and they actually got some knowledge, we wouldn't have a question about SARS-CoV-2. On the other hand, if we look at SARS-CoV-2 as a mere model, virtual, if I, I really dislike that, I've always disliked this virtual reality, it's this computer-generated, man-made similitude hasn't explained anything about the reality of SARS-CoV-2, but could very well be spoken to by someone that believes it because they programmed it. And you're hearing in this, this term the, idea, the, the, the proof. It's strictly limited in to computer processing as we currently, in our ignorance, apply. The actual process of analyzing and interpreting data is referred to as computational biology. Important subdisciplines within bioinformatics and computational biology include two points. One, development and implementation of computer programs that enable efficient access to management and use of various types of information. That one doesn't seem to contribute at all to understanding reality just deals with the information they've fraudulently created, it seems to me. I suppose that's just to make it, package it so it's more acceptable and you can swallow it, just like other medicine that they want to shove down your throat. Number two, development of new algorithms, mathematical formulas, and statistical measures that act, assess relationships among members of a data set. For example, that these are methods to locate a gene within a sequence, uh, predict a protein structure and or function, and to cluster protein sequences into families of related sequences. Okay, that's fine, but that's not talking about reality. That's talking about how we're looking at similarities. Isn't that no different? We're really describing pattern recognition, aren't we? Is that reality? No, that's still working out the, the minimum, the, the, the limitations of your computational power. It happens to be men and women that are programmers that, based on whatever they think that they're the, the reality of the world is. And I'm not, don't want to diminish some of this. Some of these people have great insight on how this is supposed to work, but this is research, if you will, nothing more. This, I don't even think, gets into science yet. This is like setting up another tool to set up an experiment. Like pulling data that you have from the environment in order to put into a system to see if you can ra rationalize it before you go do the experiment to see if it then correlates to something in reality. The primary goal of bioinformatics is to increase the understanding of biological processes. Fair enough. What sets it apart from other approaches, however, is its focus on developing and applying computationally intensive techniques to achieve this goal. Examples include pattern recognition, data mining, machine learning algorithms, and visualization. And haven't I just described the world of the future in your little phone? That's all this bioinformatics that they rely on, work, focus on, someone's understanding of how a computer works under with applied ignorance is why we see the CRISPR-9 and all this technology that bioinformatics was supposed to give us cannot predict, cannot do. And anybody who has a sensible mind says, well, you don't even, you, but you don't even know. And the proof of which is so-called SARS-CoV-2. To this date, there's no way to prove it. They've claimed ISIL. I hope so. I hope people go to the blogcaster and get those links. I've asked John Rappaport to go. He never responds to me. I don't know why. This is important things. It's, these, everyone should be seeing what they're doing. They're claiming to have SARS-CoV-2 isolates. When you look very carefully, and I hope some of you did, and I hope you, you identified, those were actually supposed samples from the people that were getting off planes and where they caught it. Those weren't isolates. Yet they're being promoted as isolates. And then they stick them through what? An assay. That is what? PCR. That itself just replicates whatever's before it. And then in question at that, there's no knowledge of what they're dealing with, actually. And so bioinformatics would suggest that there's a lot of power here and expertise, but it's not. And we can be lulled into all this, or we can take this information, take it through, we synthesize it through our brain, and we figure out what the fraud is in order to, to present that and protect ourselves 
from it being presumed to be okay, like the FDA did. FDA did to agree, and if you're a few minutes to death, and you're going to die anyway, they just take control of the situation. That you're going to be dead, you are deemed dead. Now I want to know what, what happened to the body. Is your habeas going to work there? Now they have themselves what? The hunk of meat they're animating. Utilizing these technologies that are big questions. And they'll continue to do that until they think they've figured it out in order to benefit you somehow. And to me, a bit of terror there. Uh, if you, I don't know about other people. I just don't. To me, I'm not. For myself, I don't somehow even feel like I'm going to be involved with it. My point is, we're looking at a very interesting problem in the future. They've already telling you they do not agree that you have a right in your own self, not even in the last minute. They don't agree that you can be, well, if you have the website access, you can say, don't do it to me. They're going to do it to the next guy. They'll make more. They're just like Lay's potato chips out there. And it's going to get to the point where Soylent Green becomes a product other than what we hear about the organic food now that's popped up, that company. They'll make more for the process of feeding more. For the end result of those that get to do it. Because no one else said, wait a minute, you guys are nuts. I told you a long time ago about the ethicists. Once they broke down that wall, they're still questioning it, but they let, they let the wall broke, break down on other things. It's like if I was in PETA, I would say, but, but you abused the animals and, for, and you claimed, a, you claimed a, a, a human power to do so. Yeah, that's kind of what they've done here. They've, they've abused the animal world kingdom and the plant kingdom, and they've, they've played games with it, and they've kind of justified themselves and now we're looking at whether or not they can do it to you as an animal that feeds on all that stuff. To do what? I don't know. Where'd these guys get, what plan would you have as someone that steals your life without title to control your life without the title to it? It's up to us to protect ourselves from. And if you won't, uh, I don't know what to say. I, I can't protect anybody. Uh, it's difficult to even protect each one of ourselves, each one of us because of this oppression we've also offered. They have us many steps back. And somehow I still think we can work this through if we all knew that, which is why I keep coming back behind the woodshed to explain you need to be behind the woodshed, not to receive, but to give principles that were never supposed to be violated against you. Dr. Tom, and speaking of John Rappaport, again, I admire John Rappaport's work greatly. I admire lots of people's work greatly. What I'm getting more and more troubled at is the lack of response when I ask to review or when I make a comment to what's supposed to happen, the lack of response completely to respond to either tell me I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm talking about, or to say anything about, well, that makes some sense, or I'm not even in that condition, I'm not able to do that, and that's fair enough. But since this of every one of us is being affected, the ones with this knowledge, should have the most power to advance it. And we're not. They're not, and I, and I don't understand some of this why. I'm getting a lot dismayed at what's, who's out there and what they actually do, notwithstanding my admiration for their work. I mean, John Rappaport is a guy, he's been doing this since like the 80s. He's not a slouch. I don't know, I don't, and I don't know him, and I, I, I think highly of him at some point, but I'm starting to look around and noticing there's no reflection to responding with all this knowledge we have, responding with that knowledge in a proper way. And the prop, well, I have to add the proper, well, it should always be proper anyway. Principally, it should be principally. But we're in another occupation, another illusion, and that has to be broken down. It can be done. It's pretty quick, but you have to be able to prepare for that. Going into John Rapport's discussion, we have a couple of art articles he's written. I think I'm going to refer to Ta Dr. Tom Cohen explores the COVID virus invented out of sheer nonsense. The hits keep coming. The CDC used an arbitrary computer tinker toy process to invent a description of the virus. The virus that no one has proven exists. This is the basic conclusion of Dr. Tom Cohen. Now, you can, you must know why I use this report here from John it was in the first, the second sentence of the first paragraph. The CDC used an arbitrary computer tinker toy process to invent the description of the virus is bioinformatics. Invent, create, we're looking, we're modeling, we're trying to figure out the world. But they moved, as we heard, and you'll hear and understand if you do the research about dual use and then 
Clint Richardson's document, nine hours now of documentary exposing this condition, they will invent harms in order to say, well, if we can do that, then we've got to defend ourselves from them, like the Munchausen syndrome. But, but this is all in computer-based models. Even the live exercise is a computer-based model. They're doing live bioinformatics on people. It's a right, the very first second sentence, first paragraph, the CDC used an arbitrary computer tinker toy process to invent the description of the virus. This is, this is the expert. Uh, doctor, it goes on, Dr. Cohen states, quote, the CDC journal article in brackets now was published in June 2020, original publication March 20, March of 2020. The purpose of the article was for a group of about 20 virologists to describe the state of the science of the isolation, purification, and biological characteristics of the new SARS-CoV-2 virus and to share this information with other scientists for their own research. And a thorough and careful reading of this important paper reveals some shocking findings. Close quote. It goes on the discussion from John in describing what the statements are, and I'm just jumping through the article as uh, the sequencing of SARS-CoV-2 virus was done by assumption and arbitrary inference. If this is science, a penguin is a spaceship. Cohen states, quote, to me, this computer generation step constitutes scientific fraud. So if you're not listening to me about whether this is fraud or not, take it from a doctor. And I don't know how many more people you're going to need, but if you can't see this on your own, I don't know what to say. But if you can't get it from this doctor after I've been telling to you how this all is, is set up, and I just gave you the term that they use that are all strictly models in computers, we have more and more confirmation that is a fraud that cannot sustain the restraint on your liberty in law. Not through the legal process, because that's what's going to be the next obstruction. You can go through that, but right now, in law. To me, this computer generation step constitutes scientific fraud. Here is an equivalency. A group of researchers claim to have found a unicorn, because they found a piece of hoof, a, a hair from a tail, and the snippet of a horn. Then they add that information into a computer and the program it to recreate the unicorn. And then they claim this computer recreation is the real unicorn. Of course, they have never actually seen a unicorn, so could not possibly have examined its genetic makeup to compare those samples with an actual unicorn, hair, hooves, and horn. Quote, the researchers claim they have decided, they have decided, they decided which is the real genome of SARS-CoV-2 by consensus, sort of like a vote. Again, different computer programs will come up with different versions of the unicorn imaginary unicorn, so they come together as a group to decide which is the real imaginary unicorn. That absolutely defines what I've been telling you for years on the process of your life and how adjunct policy has interfered and infringed your law, the very thing that COVID-19 is executing the methods from to get you to be quiet, and you have. You're in your own Delphi, you're in your own Delphi meeting right now, and as long as you keep listening to the cards, and even if you just sit at your table and complain, they win. So th this is a very interesting report here that John pulls out, and discussion by a doctor, the terms of which are consistent with things I've told you are the method of how they destroy you, and you're allowing it, and all consistent with what I've told you about AI not being intelligence. It's simply pattern recognition. As, as creative and fantastic as that pattern recognition can be, that's all it is. I don't care how fast your computer is going to be. I don't care how many cores you got on it. That's all it's going to end up doing. And if it's always conditioned on who made the program, what was the, what in the mind's eye of the programmer, what did the unicorn look like that they were making up? Still, as accurate as that might have been to the reality of that thought, doesn't make it real either, is the fraud. And when you're able to just delineate these points, boom, 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 in a bullet points, you can establish a presumption against, uh, not even a presumption, the facts which, the when you put it in the right form, and I've been asking you to try and do a habeas for yourself, would be to set the 
burden against the government to prove that you're wrong. It's a, you don't even have to argue. You just go through like something like this article and then point out exactly where the failures are and then declare the fraud. This is all amounts to fraud. They can't rely on a, a, a valid order on restraint of my liberty in any way, shape, or form based on fraud. And one of the other themes along this is I've seen people think they cannot do anything, like it's going to go away. So much evidence shows they don't plan on, they're not letting you up. They've got you down and they're not letting you up. That the, I've been, in fact, I've been telling people, even in states where you, 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 it looks like some of the orders have been lifted, you notice, like in, I think it's, what is it, Wisconsin, Minnesota, she's not lifting those. So I said, you're going to need these. I said, don't, don't shy away from going back in and doing your habeas papers. You're probably going to have to carry one of those around in your pocket here. If you, I mean, the bottom line is I think you need to execute on them now because you see they're not stopping. That If you want to understand that they're moving this forward, we return again to the Rockefeller Foundation. Another story came out this week, and these are older older pieces of information just reseen by people, but to remind us, uh, reset the table, meeting the moment the transformed the U.S. food system, the Rockefeller Founder Foundation. Again, they are creating these problems in order to claim that they're solving it. America's facing a hundred, hunger nutrition crisis unlike any this country has seen in generations. Today, 14 million children are missing a meal, a meal uh, on a regular basis. It's a statistic that's five times worse than before COVID pandemic. It's even worse for Latino and black families, which have seen the nutrition ins- ins- insecurity spike 25% and 30% respectively. In many ways, COVID-19 has boiled over some long-simmering problems plaguing American food system, which began as a public health crisis fueled as the economic crisis, leaving 33% of the families unable to afford the amount of food uh, or quality of food they want. School closures that put 30 million students at risk is losing the meals they need to to thrive. Lot of word. I told you they're tying this whole economic thing together with your nutrition. The nutrition could have solved COVID. That makes you sick if you're not healthy. Uh, you see in this beginning statement, they are planning for this thing to go farther and and longer because they've they've caused the very things that they know are happening. They then go through an analysis by way of COVID. What it has revealed. What I told you. Back in, I think it was 2010, maybe 2012, but if not, just go look for all the modernization acts around that though, that time. The modernization acts hit every one of those subject matters. I told you what's coming in the future is going to be these things interfering with your so-called food, food security, which we didn't have until the meddling started, which we didn't have until the environmentalists, so-called, the green terrorists started attacking your water sources, let's say in the, in the breadbasket, if you will, of, of the United States and California, tearing down all the ranches and farms under because of a fight for water for a fish that was completely avoidable. But they weren't going to avoid it because the governmental infrastructure is in maladministration, which is left unchecked. As I said, what COVID has revealed, I've, I've said similar, COVID allows you to expose all of this coming from a fraud and destroying everything that they've been trying to do against you all. And it's not going to, it's not, I can't see how it gets pretty. I just can't see how it goes back to the day before the unicorn. And they'll be using these computers in order to justify, as you see, the the computer models would, of that one university caused a lot of this. That guy should have went, that guy should have went away for a long time, but he hasn't. That should tell you something. You're going to have to step up. You may not be able to go after that guy right away, but you can stop the the suffering. You can stop the violation, the treason against you locally by what I've been telling you. And if not, you can at least start your record to do so. And I say if not because you still get the record there. When you see someone like Whitmer, I think she's in Michigan, disregarding what the Supreme Court just told the federal court, Two different jurisdictions have been now on the same page. You have to understand the enemy that, that you're up against. You have to see that as the enemy that you're up against. Who taps and what's coming and what they're here. That's always Rockefeller. They're making plans on you into the future. This is not ending. 
at any time soon. Why I've been advocating on and on and not stopping to tell you, you have to rise up and there's some tools you can start with. I may not have the ultimate answer yet. I don't know. No, I, I can't even get a conversation with anybody that, that, that meets, meets the condition yet, let alone to exercise the veracity of the, I mean, not the truth of it, but I mean the propriety of what I'm saying. It's the only thing I've confined in 30 years of looking that will properly address, more properly address an attack of the t nature that I told you was we're coming into at the first of the year. And that, that I've, been look, I've been looking, I've been vigilant, diligent to try to work out, is there an op another way to do this? I can't find it yet. And because not a lot of people want to step in to see the problems that there are in order to get a feel for what's happening, it takes a long time. It's certainly taking us a long time. In fact, trying to get the legislature will work on simple, just adding a couple words here and there, into a bill to fix the problem that no one understands is the problem has been just like pulling teeth. The, you see, these attorneys, they know, they know what's going on. Otherwise, they wouldn't be so, so much in writing, in being, wanting not to see the remedy. And it doesn't take a lot of words to make the remedy, is what I'm also finding out. But here, we think that this is going away. We just heard that Rockefeller Foundation knows how it's affecting us. It's affecting us right where the effect of what's going on would allow them to say that we have a health problem. It all builds together. These people are really ge evil geniuses on how they pulled it together. They know exactly, somebody knew exactly, I told you this, knew exactly what they needed to hit and how to hit it. It's still not right. And that's their Achilles heel, but they knew to go there. And so unless you understand what I've been saying to really understand, no, not all you see to be able to call out all the crime that's out there. Not to be persuaded from one shiny thing in the news to the next shiny thing. But start to turn and focus on what's keeping you chained down invisibly that you want to just think is not. It's going to take a very particular thought and a view to, in order to work your way back out and free yourself. Because they're working on a global scale here. How they did it is astonishing to me. I don't really quite fully understand it, but I can see the method, and I understand the method works. And so at that point, I get, I get the, I, I get it. I get how they did it. Everybody responds the same, and they exploited those weaknesses in you, as I've said before. They know you better than you know yourself. Where did I get that? For all as much as it might be dismissed, the protocols of the elders of Zion told me there's a people. I don't care if that's a counterfeit of an original. There's a people that understand how to exploit other people to a very high level. And that deeply struck me, very deeply struck me. It changed how I perceive things. And so I'm here after long years with that, looking and working through the things I don't know about myself, the weaknesses I may have, trying not to let that happen doesn't mean I'm invincible. I got those, you got weaknesses. You just got to figure, you got to honest up to them and you got to figure them out so that you stay away from those things that you can be exploited in. And then you execute on what you're very strong at. And if you think these people are going away here, the who, the rock, not the rock group or the owl, but the WHO, these criminals, these non-governmental criminals, understand that these are not this is an, a, a, an agency, this is a, an entity that has no governmental capacity at all. These are the ones that have somehow taken title over even the humans. And uh, that's going to be a demand, I think, I make advance at some point given the opportunity. Where's your title over humans even? Leave the humans alone. As a man, get your grubby paws off me, you damn dirty ape. Why have I, can I say that? Because I've found out that if they want to profess to have a title and it's underneath an officialdom, it has to have a lineage of authority as well. It has a title. And when they fail in the execution of that obligation and duty they've undertaken, they're of no authority at all and they're a criminal. Who taps? Uh, not a question. The who. No, not, it's not a question here. Who taps? World Health Organization, well, the World Health Organization, I will get this out, taps. Anti-conspiracy crusader to sway public opinion on COVID vaccine. If you think these people are going away, notwithstanding all the lies that they've facially told you all, 
and they continue because you won't step up and stop it. This is no different in my mind than when we dealt, we deal with the agency side of government and we show the law they violated and it stops, stops them in their tracks and none of us will step up to do that. And I'm not saying go to the WHO because it's irrelevant. Those are, all, those are foreigners. You can go right to your local health administrator that puts on something on you and makes a demand. An outspoken proponent, and listen folks, it's history repeating itself on the same criminals we've known all along. An outspoken proponent of government-led tactics to influence public opinion on policy and to undermine the credibility of conspiracy theorists will lead the World Health Organization's WHO efforts to encourage public acceptance of the COVID-19 vaccine children's defense, uh, health defense has learned. Last week, the WHO's general director, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, tweeted that he was glad to speak with the organization's technical advisor, advisory group on behavioral insights and science for health to, quote, discuss vaccine acceptance and uptake in the context of COVID-19. I hope you picked up the word that I've been telling you is what they're after. They want your behavior correct. They're adjusting your behavior incrementally, and they've got you all quiet. I don't care how vociferous everyone seems to be about how many rights and freedoms they have. They have you shut up. You are shut up, and you're shut up. For as much as they let you out, and what little bit of rebellion that you throw out there, these people know they have you shut down. They have your behavior starting to be under control. They know they've been effective, and until you step up properly, to show that they don't, they're going to continue. And who's going to do it? In the next, in his next tweet, Gabrielsus, man, these names, announced that Cass Sunstein, founder of the director of the program on behavioral economics and public policy at Harvard Law School, will chair the advisory group, which was created in July. Sunstein was the was former president Barack Obama's head of office of information and regulatory affairs where he was responsible for overseeing policies related to information quality. That's the quality of your information now, folks. This is this guy. Did you know about the behavioral, economic, and policy, public policy at Harvard Law School? Where have I told you is the problem? But in the law schools, in the bar associations condition, uh, system, and in the control of behavior, all sitting through the law system. They can get you to comply through what they profess is the law. When you don't bring anything else, when the Supreme Court said the governor has ultimate power because the other attorneys didn't advance the right question and the right position, which should not have been a question, they got the advantage. Now Cass Sunstein's going to step back up, and he's going to be the guy that's going to be the cheerleader for this system of, of behavioral control into going uh, to accept the, uh, what, profit by organized criminal syndicate underneath the felony, the crime, the treason of a undercolor of a cri health crisis. And you're not talking against it. Here's some information that I found quickly about Cass Sunstein. In 2008, while at Harvard Law School, Sunstein co-wrote a truly pernicious paper proposing the United States government employ teams of covert agents and pseudo-independent advocates to cognitively infiltrate online groups and websites, as well as other activist groups, which advocates views that Sunstein deems, quote, false conspiracy theories, close quote, about the government. This would be designed to increase citizens' faith in government officials and undermine the credibility of conspiracy, conspiracists. And if I had to look at what they, uh, he purported to do back in 2008, I have to say in 2020, Hindsight 2020, he was really successful. Another story here, just to let you know what this guy does, and I'm sure there's lots of you that know about this guy more than I do. I don't keep pay attention to these people. I've been trying to focus on how to make it so they're not relevant in everybody's life. I would hope other people would join me. But in an op-ed entitled Open Brain Insert Ideology, Sunstein cites, the, Sunstein cites a study of, of reforms to the Chinese education system that seemingly proves curriculums uh, can be, quote, explicitly designed to transform students' political views, close quote. Sunstein goes on to the question whether such reforms could be effective in the United States. Let me give you over to the current education system by computer 
And that was all told to us, and I won't go through all that again. Uh, this is the, the guy who agrees that the Chinese education system could help transform students' political views, and I'm going to advance. They consider all of you, if you will, the students to transform because you're not men and women standing up. They're their kids. They're exactly what the FDA says. You don't have a choice. When you get near death, they're going to take control and have to, and essentially make you, at this point, a, a bioinformatics subject. So this is a guy that's moving into the who to it wants to transform your political views. What did we say about what this other director, this WHO director said? This this COVID is not, it's about advancing climate change. It's about economic control. It's about behavioral control. It's about su sustainable sustainability. It's about sustainable development. This is a political attack on your lifestyle. And you're going to find in this non-governmental condition, you don't have art... You have no property. The FDA is already telling you that. Remember, they're doing health one health or health one. Remember, you're not you have no administ you have no property. You're in an administrative governance world. All these little notices into us are telling us that, and I I can't wonder why people focus on everything else. And I know why all the, there's lots of stuff to do, but why do we allow as men and women responsible men and women to ourselves and our families? Why do we? Look at the next shiny bobble of news instead of saying, boy, these people really have it together. We have some dig, some digging out to do. And then we have some house cleaning to do. And I'm not saying that because I want to see that, that I want to do that. It's like, this is a war. It's now not what I want to do. It's what's necessary to do. And yet I hear everybody, most everybody, I think it's everybody, that I'm looking at other things. More interested in that than this. It's fascinating. And these people are coming to come against you. And it's not about you. I, I, how many listeners might I have? A couple hundred now in a week instead of thousands I used to have on a bigger network? You think that even if you all knew, knew exactly, we're doing what you were supposed to do, and we were getting beat down even though we were doing so much, do you think that our influence would mean anything? But I don't even have that kind of r report. R rapport. I don't have that kind of re return. What I have is people in handfuls that are attempting to understand what they're up against, and we're finding out very quickly we don't know the first thing about it, and that's taking a lot of time to work through. And and now they're moving on to propagandizing to the rest of them, using high-level integration of control and propaganda programming. Common pass. New COVID security measure make health and prerequisites for travel. How are they going to get this through? Because no one showed it was a fraud what they're doing. And it's only going to take one or two of you. I, I think one. One starts it once you get the re valid record. Having hardly anybody trying to do this is, means that there's no one going to make that example. Imagine standing at TSA security checkpoints in your way home for holidays. Started when? 911. Remember, I told you this is where it continues and it gets worse? You're getting ready to go through an awkward travel procedure instituted almost immediately after 911 when the Transportation and Security Administration, TSA, was created and air travel in the United States morphed into search and seizure operations with the implied possibility of your detention interrogation. And crickets. The initial outrage such expression of implicit state violence caused early on eventually gave way to a begrudging acceptance. There, that's the answer. And so everybody that gave the begrudging acceptance, you made the future. That's how it works. Doesn't, take all, doesn't matter how long it takes to get your begrudging acceptance, as long as they get your acceptance. And they've got it when you're locked down and not fighting for your life because this is what we're talking about ultimately it's your life and it's the life of your of the future your little ones your, your posterity there isn't going to be a posterity all that's going to be destroyed but now a new layer of quote security that could restrict freedom of movement even further is being rolled out as several port, ports of entry in partnership in partnership in partnership Sustainable development all over everything, folks. And a healthy technology, a health technology industry's leaders, technology, not science, these technocrats, the technologists, these 
bioinformatics nut jobs, academic institutions, yeah, like Harvard Law School, and government health entities, which have completely failed their duty and you never called out. That's the Achilles heel right there. You never called that out. Uh, health entities in, no, in more than three dozen countries. That's one of your states, folks. A new digital certificate called Common Pass, a new digital certificate called Common Pass designed to serve as a clearance mechanism for passengers based on health diagnosis underwent its first transatlantic test on October 21st under the watchful eye of the Centers of Disease Control, CDC, and U.S. Border Customs Border Protection, CBD, CBP, at the Heathrow Airport in London. What are they doing there? Anyway, small world after all. They, a group of selected participants, embarked on United uh, Flight 15 to Newark, New Jersey, after, is that, is that where Shelly's at? They're coming at you, Shelly. After the, their screenshot and tested a COVID-19 at the point of departure in a largely ceremonial exercise, that live exercise for COVID continued, that included initiative co-founders Paul Myers and Bradley Perkins. The app's first trial run took place with much less media fanfare last month on a Cathay Pacific Airways flight from Hong Kong to Singapore that marked the beginning of the Common Pass pilot project launched by the Commons Project nonprofit organization in tandem with the World Health with World Economic Forum. So we're having all the same players. Common Pass is reality, just like I said it would be. This is going to be your digital world, digital lifestyle, life lifeline as well and guess what this does and i don't know if it's farther in the article this is now because you're being silent in locked in your homes and whatever freedom that they've given you and you think you're getting away with they've now presumed upon you sickness and non-innocence to be required to show that you're healthy to be able to move about the countries likely to be about the country wherever you live the most probably certainly in Australia, notwithstanding I talked about how to stop all that over there. And so if you think this is going away and you think it can go, you don't, you can avoid it. I'm telling you these are the, the earmarks of how they bring the technology along. It's all a fraud. It's all computers. It's all this professed accuracy when the reality, like the human embryos, when they look at it, is, is completely atrocious, horrid, uh, horror, terror relative to what they think they want to do because they're just helping you so much. But this is moving into your digital certificate, your social credit. You're going to have to have your phone. You're going to do anything. They're going to, you're going to have to prove that you are innocent of any harm to who? The community. Is sustainable development in your face? With every law to stop that encroachment. And I don't hear anybody stepping up. You think it's out there? They've already said they've extended it now to three places in this report. They're putting it in place. You're going to be now guilty of not being healthy if you can't get a test. And which test is that? The technologist test, of course. The same test I've shown you earlier in the broadcast. Every story shows reality is not what the technologist thought it was. They say that you're supposed to test for a unicorn, and you don't test for that unicorn, you're sick. And the unicorn they inject you with was actually going to kill you over time. Maybe put you in an accelerated rate for your putting you into that suspended animation they want to do. For those, the worst of you that wants to, wants to resist. They're going to have a couple of uh, gene therapies for you while they put your dead body out and bring it back. Leading corona researchers admit that they have no scientific proof for the existence of a virus. Again, all these stories come along and I'm just, I just can't believe the story's right here in front of us. In another place. The information here about the fraud is, is is worldwide. This is why I want to go to this story. I think it came out of somewhere out of Germany. It had to be translated. That's the, uh, the 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 link I have for you when you go to read it. If you go to read it, I hope you go to read this stuff. Then I hope you turn around and 
focus your energy down and start to do what I, I've been asking you to do for yourself. Obviously, it's not for me. It's for you. And then it's each one of us. I saw a picture of a of a bee. I can't remember how the phrase was. It was. It had to do with stand. We stand united. It showed bees flying into a hive. And I looked at that. See, I look a little different. Maybe I guess it's open to argument. But no, we don't stand united. We have to do take action individually as one. In other words, our individual, our private action is the action we need to take, and we're all taking it. We're not actually the hive. We don't stand as one. How much are you going to get done standing? You better be running here. And you better be running with a big bucket of water or something in your hand to put the fire out you're headed for. To stand together seems to be, a re I guess, uh, an irritation to me. Stand together, stand united, do it all. No, you you have to, this is each one of us have to defend ourselves. But in the proper defense of each one of us doing that, we become the mass of properly acting people that is not actually the hive, but looks like a big mass of movement in the right direction to stop this nonsense. We say, stand together. Okay, stand up. Everyone stands up. Oh, I feel patriotic now. I feel like I'm on a cause. No, stop standing and start at, start moving. Start doing what you have to do. Protect yourself. Your house is on fire. Put it out. You never fought a fire? Learn fast. Get behind a woodshed, and then get behind a woodshed, and and stop the arson against your house. And then, as we each stop that arson against each one of our houses, the, the conflagration goes away. And if we do it better, even better than what I'm speaking, not just show them they didn't have the right, but actually then use that to go after them and solve the the fix all the patches they put in our boat. All the, all the holes they drilled in our boat, we start patching those holes back up because now we understand how they did it. We might be stronger tomorrow. Leading corona research admit they have no scientific proof. Another concise uh, document on and on and on. Again, to me, I'm just like, I'm beyond even proving there's no, there's no, there's no virus. And I'm, and it's because I'm focused on if we just, Focus on the fact that they have a, these officials had a duty that they failed. That's really all we need to, to get done. If they failed, they have no authority, no juris, it's actually a jurisdictional point. And I don't know if people appreciate this. And you'll read this very clearly when you finally get engaged. It's not that it's just a fraud. It's that the, they can't rely on jurisdiction of power or authority on a fraud. That's jurisdic, that jurisdiction word becomes critical because that's what they're handed if they comply. They don't have it if they don't. Well, any decision made without jurisdiction is void. It's really simple. I don't know what, what, what the problem is, but here's a link, and I won't go through it. It's just tons of information all pulled together talking about this COVID pandemic, <laughs> talking about SARS-CoV-2, and it shows statement after statement after statement that they have. there's just nothing. That is objective. So together, if you were to have an, like for the habeas corpus, I wouldn't necessarily have it. I'd have all this stuff in my back pocket. I'd rely on the initial, if you go to the David Tulis, the Tulis report and get his, his complaint, you re rely on the first eight pages for a habeas. But if you wanted to be ready, this kind of information goes to the mitigation and the fraud. In case they come with a fight, and you need to you need to counter their the they're going to throw gas on the fire. You need to come with foam, and this becomes the foam to counter all that. You don't bring it first. It doesn't become part of that that petition. It comes in the response in the reply to their to their response to their return. But leading corona researchers admit they have no scientific proof. It's not just one here, folks. When you get through this, it's fascinating. Again, for someone like myself who has been convicted in the failures way back since at least March for sure, when I finally put up the hashtag, there is no test, that's where I understood there would be no defense against the condition, the, the assertion of authority. There's no defense for the fraud uh, since then. To see all this information put in this way is still stunning, even to myself. And it's refreshing to watch someone... And I appreciate that someone put it all together. 
And guess what? It's not in the United States. This is in Germany. In other words, it's a global plan. This is not a joke. This is literally a global plan. It's being executed. And it's being executed with all the same failures. As I said, the Achilles heel will be found in every country, for every people in every country. Why, another question was, in, in, in the UK, we're going to get to that here, I think. There's no, there's the people, stop protesting in the streets. You have a much better, more powerful, pointed attack. Each one of you can do. Each one of you. And you well, you swell into the system with your remedy here. It's not going to be able to be dismissed so quick. I can just tell you that. Doctors for Truth, tens of thousands of medical professionals suing and calling an end to the COVID tyranny. So if you felt you were alone, I was telling you you were on the right side of history. We got the doctors coming. They're from Europe as well. Not only is this compilation was from in Germany, I think, or in German language, now we have people on the other side of the, of the, in the European Union, doctors standing up. Tens of thousands, they say. If you needed some encouragement, I'm saying you have the power on your own. What this is, is more information. If you get their information, as I said, it becomes in your back pocket when the government comes to say and try to push the fraud, you show them how that's a fraud on the court and the fraud on a, and to trespass on the case and nevertheless does not meet the burden that the government official was required to evidence in answer to your habeas or whatever other remedy you choose. And I would say focus in on the equity side because I think it's much more immediate, except in those jurisdictions that want to make that a fight. And that requires that you have all your ducks in a row. And that's imperative that you follow, this is why I say you follow those rules, because if you've qualified all the rules, then they can't use that to delay, and when you have it, then they can make an, they can plausibly delay what's going on, yet equity happens in days, folks, I don't know, I don't get this, this is not a lawsuit like most people think, the burden's properly placed, which is just the law, and the proper remedy doing that requires that the official has to answer if you properly ad advance that the fraud cannot be used to restrain you, that you're restrained. You have nothing more to say there. They're going to try and answer. You're going to have to have maybe a, more information that you bring then, later, to counter the fraud, the second fraud they try to pull on the record. Proof of COVID-19 virus, a request for meaning, proof of the COVID-19 virus, a freedom of information request to the Prime Minister's office. This is in the UK. This was done here recently, and it was done actually back in May. As I was telling you to do it, someone in UK was, uh, and I don't remember now the, the name. The, the name on the YouTube was different, I think, than the name of the guy who was doing it. And I, don't, I, didn't go, I didn't really settle down to figure out who was actually doing this by their name in the UK, and what they did is a freedom of information request in summary here, because i got to get through this information, and it came back from the office who made the law that, that locked everybody down in the UK that they was requiring proof of the COVID-19 virus to allow and empower the law to exist. The failure to identify it would have made a fraud in the law legislation. He's going at it a little bit differently. He's going right after the enactment. We don't have those enactments that I know of. The orders kind of work that way, but they're in a different power, and that's they're subject to this duty that they've not, there's no evidence for. In the UK, they now have the response from the one of the offices, and I'm not a I don't know anything about the UK procedure, so you have to go there to look whether or not this is absolutely this is complete. But it would be very close to complete, where there was no evidence given that anybody had evidence of the virus causing COVID. And so you can then kick in, and I asked last night about this relative to that, that there's a, two links here for you to read someone who wrote a letter to try and get the information. Let me. What evidence do you have that you, you made the law? What's the evidence for the COVID? They come back, we have no documents to provide for you. The way I would have I approached that, I'm not going to say would have, the way I approach that is now there is no evidence. Since the burden is on the government, if you do it to the correct remedy, 
they now have to provide the rev evidence that you now have letter to show that they don't have any. It's going to be real difficult for them to invent one now, don't you think? That I get, you have a couple links. You can kind of see the form that goes on. You really need to synthesize this down to a. a I, I think I've told you a, an easier question. You just go to the statute and you just demand the evidence of the compliance with the statute. Why you do that is because that's the one that the authority is object is liable to without question. The duty and obligation. The extension that I don't understand about this other case in UK is. Where is the duty and obligation? They assert one, but they didn't support it. So be careful not to do that as well. It could be there. I'm not saying it doesn't. I'm saying that to make it a nice chain of, of authority for your cause, you need to find the duty and obligation for them to have to have had the proof of the cause for the legislation, if that's the way he wants to go. If he has it, great. That's what you need. For the United States, you just, or even under any state, you have a public health official has a, do, an obligation and duty. You find it, you look for, you ask for the, you demand the evidence for all the points in that statute that they're obligated to. When they return the answer that's gobbledygook, or say something like, "Well, we can't find any of any documentation in our in our holding for the purpose of FOIA," you then just move directly with a statement: "There is no evidence." And you let the burden now shift over for them to try and invent it and be ready that they might try. But I said then, based on this finding that's been done going on now in, in UK, there's no excuse now in the UK and by extension to other, to the Queen's, Queen's holdings around the world. Canukistan, Australia, New Zealand. Same thing here, folks. As I was telling you, the Ranchero 42 had actually gave me this uh, gentleman's information to go look at. And uh, my question was, after finding about this, I said habeas should work there then, right? And uh, back, Ranchero42 sends me back a, a link to discussion in the UK under the habeas for the UK. You have it. And so I say my comment back is, so I don't know what's holding anyone back. Fraud is not a warranted restraint of liberty. And that's to everybody. I wrote that last sentence. Fraud is not a warranted restraint of liberty. And that's your entire case. That's your entire cause, in a way. If I was to reduce everything I've ever said, that would be a, a good start right there. You may have to develop a little bit, but that's the statement and cause. Fraud is not warranted restraint of liberty. I want released. I want them. the burdens on them now to show it's not a fraud. And then you just start You just start whacking the pitches. You just They try to pitch something, you just whack a home run out of it. Burdens on them. So what's the re so I don't understand. But someone's going to have to tell me, explain to me how showing that it's a fraud is not uh, doesn't prove that there's no warrant for the restraint that you all are under. That might be the UK. It's the same thing in every state. It's the same thing in all places. And what do we what do we expect to be up here? These people aren't going to stop. They aren't going to stop until people step up, like this gentleman. And I apologize, his name uh, the, uh, the name escapes me, and the name of his website escapes me too. I, I'm not focused on that. But he's done what I asked you to do on his own. I'm sure he didn't hear me. He asked it a little bit different, but it it works to be the same conclusion. Now, what are you going to do? Well, he's going to go sue the all MPs in the parliament. Now, for you. That's a bit of work. And I, for most people, I wouldn't say necessarily do that. I understand he's had a very su good success rate in his, and this guy has in the UK, and excuse me for not knowing his name. It didn't come up and I couldn't see it. I got to move on here. Uh, against a mortgage fraud. So he understands some of the courts and the, what he's dealing with. So he's going to go after the parliament. For each one of you in the UK or any Commonwealth or even the United States government, uh, in the states of the United States, you can use what he found just like I was telling you. Same thing. You Google the same thing you want to do in your locale to, to expose this. Because these if you think that you're not going to do it and these people are going away, and I think it was Gerald Salenti came out and talked about, you know, you, you accept these clowns to decide for you. Another guy, I truly appreciate Gerald Salenti's work. However, at some point you gotta stop complaining, stop pointing out the obvious and start being the example of how you're going to start addressing it. And uh, if you think these clowns are going away, we have that they're not. They're, in fact, they utilize the cover of Halloween three weeks before Halloween in order to show you they're going to be clowns. Watch, Oregon health official announces COVID-19 death toll dressed as a clown. 
A senior Oregon health official donned a clown costume prior to announcing the daily death toll for coronavirus. Well, coronavirus isn't even the novel one. There's no death toll to count, is there? But they're telling you the truth. They're, count, they're, they're giving you numbers. They're, they're clowning around. They're dealing with clowns. Oregon's full of clowns in government. And that's one of the realities. And they want to make it look like, oh, they tried to make it like it's a skit, like it was trying to do another, try to tell you something new. No, it actually doesn't. Because they just told you that they're, they're keeping track of death tolls of a non-novel coronavirus. Claire Poche, a senior official at Oregon Health Authority, made the announcement dressed in a red tie, polka dot shirt, bright yellow pants, and a face, full face of clown makeup. This is weeks ago, folks, they pulled this up. And we'll read more. These people are clowns, and they are telling you that, and they're still proceeding, and you're letting them. These clowns exist in every government. Gerald Salente comes out, well, how long are you guys going to be, uh, you're going to be listening to these clowns? For as much as I respect Gerald Salente and his views and what he, and his forthrightness more than anything else. Again, we may differ on opinions and he certainly understands how to discuss things. He certainly knows how to call a spade a spade and other things. But he asked, how long are you going to listen to these clowns? And he's asking, but he's not helping to stop. And I ask, why do you ask? And then I present that clown, that clown uh, article. See, that to me, that we're not stopping the clowns. What's the question? If we're not going to example how to begin stopping or stopping or working to stop, why the question? What the, it's essentially, we listen, we put up with it because we put up with it. It's pretty self-evident. And then I say, because clowns are not scarier than Boovid 19. When people start seeing criminals instead of clowns and get behind the woodshed, the circus ends. And then I offer to have him look, to bring the tent down in his state, look at the David Tulis lawsuit, that Tulis report, and just tie all this into the into your internet search and find it. And until we get to the point where we, it's not a question, until we get into defending ourselves, I don't understand the question, actually. We can ask these questions endlessly. You're finding out the clowns are coming to town, their tents are set up, and they're not stopping. In fact, they're going to promote P.T. Barnum. has got the Sass, uh, Cass Sunstein to come and promote it to y'all. And my dog directs, I just look down and see the Tulis report is at tntrafficticket.us. Yes, thank you. tntrafficticket.us. You can get a copy. So David Tulis is, is giving that out to people as well. He wants to help you all as well. And thank you, my dog directs, for your support. So we have Boovid19 scaring everybody. Scared Hall, as I said, the freakers, well, scared, even scared Halloween away. You're not going to go to Halloween. You're not going to Christmas. I hear up and they're trying to save Christmas over in the UK. Stop the nonsense. Stop these clowns from ruining your life and stop having them put their tent over your house and keeping you as a captor. You have the authority in your law, your organic law, to start to advance an addressment better, way better than just protesting. And this becomes the other question that came out on the Twitter that I, I mentioned. You know, part of me, I understand this. I understand the sentiment. On the surface, this idea of just saying no, yeah, we want to be, we just don't want to, we're not going to take, enough is enough, we're not taking any more. But this thing, folks, is not something you just say no to. And so I want to, with all respect to the post of us having the backbone to just say no, there's a way we're going to have to do that. Just say, it's like united we stand. No, united Standing does, does nothing. Each one of us acting properly to defend ourselves, each one of us moving in the same direction, is going to be united in our 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 affront to the to the attack. But we're independent. I should say we're non-dependent. Thank you, Solomon. Hope you're all right. Hope you're listening. Hope I hope what I'm saying is helpful. <laughs> anyway. 
So, and I learned a little bit about, the, about this without getting too far afield and working in medieval armor and fighting in it. And I took on a weapon style that freed me up from having to be part of a shield line and field wall. I didn't do any of that. And so I learned a little bit about that strategy on how you be, how you're mobile. And you could have a bunch of people that were mobile. And we had one cause. And that was to stop the offender. And a bunch of un, unattached, not union, not unified, non-standing, but moving people are highly effective at dis destroying the other side. And so this is a, an example I've had in my life that I think works very effectively. Each one of us is out there doing, taking our skill and applying it to an objective. And the objective is here. All It ends up being what looks to be a unified objective. It looks like we're working in, uh, united, but we're not. We're just freeing ourselves from our hold. And that is what we all work toward that looks like we're standing united. It's in the objective that the result, the resulting objective we accomplish. So I say again, just to remind you folks, we can be on the on the social media and we can just say no. We could, you know, rally the troops, if you will, underneath that banner. But this is, as I say, I wrote it back. You can't just say no. You can't be silent and you can't just say no. People don't want to hear this, but you just can't say no on this one. Sounds good to say just just say no, but it's impotent. It's like protesting. It's going to take more. And then I add, and you know what I'm going to going to say, don't you? So get you behind the woodshed now. Get you behind to teach the principles of the to the miscreants that have got you locked into your outside of what you chose for yourself underneath a fraud is only going to be stopped. When you stop it, not because these people who put it on you are going to stop. No, the circus has come to town. The circus has set up their tent, and the clowns are running the, the show, and you're allowing it. And again, if you don't think that this is getting worse and worse, then these clowns in high in low places, and they were supposed to be in service places, but they're not. They're serving themselves, not, not you. Uh, new York rolls out new testing requirements for visitors. If you think this is going anywhere away and getting solved because we're all through it, this is a plan to take you down. They're going, you're going to have to have your common pass. This is a consistent. You're moving from one place to another. You're supposed to have freedom of travel, but because they've uh, did the fraud of a crisis, they now can control your movement. And they also now, which is miss, being missed by a lot of people, presume you guilty. That Governor Andrew Cuomo said Saturday, uh, apparently he's also a Democrat, uh, he was replacing New York's weekly quarantine list with testing rules for out-of-state visitors requiring travelers to test negative for COVID-19 before and after arrival per a, a TV report. He's taking and changing the quarantine list and testing and changing it to testing for rules for out-of-state visitors. Does he have that authority? If you go look at those rules, he only has authority to quarantine even subject persons, certain people. The other thing is that they're going to test negative for COVID by what test? The one that they are using to fraudulently advance a crisis? And they get to do that because no one says challenge that? Instead, you all argued about the masks? Oh, about the social distancing? I told you don't do that. I said hold that in reserve. Once they've qualified, they have the jurisdiction, and then over what? We can see it right here in this first paragraph. That they're now moving, extending it out. You've accepted the quarantine list. We're not going to even mention that now. We're going to go to the people coming in. We're going to interfere with the right of travel. And you're going to have to be subjected to this test. Once you find out the test and the, if, if this spike protein, I just was reading it. If this spike protein is real and not just a computer, it actually affects the brain, blood brain barrier. And where are they doing the tests right in your nose and pushing? It's more of this stuff. I don't want to get lost in that side. I'm just pointing out 
Every technique they use to advance their cause, they're going to use. And every and they're relying on you, that the court told us, they're relying on you, if you don't like it, to respond. When you don't respond, they stick that thing in your nose, they put this make this thing happen, they put a test on it that's a lie, not, not responsive, a fraud, a, a research technique that's not supposed to be used for clinical uses because you never step up to say so. And this is where this is going. It's getting, they're telling you right here, they're going to shift. They're dropping away the past and they're moving to the next extension. That they're testing travelers is not the point here that you need to see. That they're focusing on the test and they're moving to the right of travel, now it gets us back to your common pass and your guilt when you're not testing. This fraudulent test has now become the truth. And that's going to continue until someone challenges it. Technocracy news. Another guy. Very interesting. Very important information coming from his website. Mercola. I don't know too much about Mercola, but he's done a report on Mercola. How COVID vaccine trials are rigged. This is not something that you would advance in the beginning. You would hold this back again in the back pocket if the other side comes with a condition that says that what they're bringing for you is mandated and required. Technocracy's coup d'etat is intensifying as, target, as it targets individual citizens to force compliance with an intended global technate or a scientific dictatorship. Remember, it's not a scientific. It's a technocratic dictatorship. It's a technologist's dictatorship. And they told you they use computers. So that's that bioinformatics. Anyway, without getting too much argument here, we're all talking toward the same end. We want people to be aware, and I want people to respond, not just sit and say, oh, oh it's getting bad. Oh, what, what, F, F them? No, none of that's going to be, just say no, no, these people are not stopping. This is a war for outright domination over your body and soul, and the prover proverbial line has been drawn in the sand. What have I said? Yeah, don't draw your line in the sand. They let them draw the line in the sand, then you go back on a foundation, because your rock is what's going to protect you, the, that foundation that you use. The objective basis is what's going to preserve that whole protection. If you don't use it, then you're not going to be benefiting that at all. They get to help because they claim a benefit, notwithstanding they don't have a title to you or the society or even the community. There's been a lot of talk lately about whether or not to fast-track COVID vaccine is, a fact to be safe, is in fact safe and effective. While va vaccine manufacturer makers insist that any vaccine reaching the market will have done and undergone vigorous testing, the way trial protocols are designed suggests these vaccines may leave a lot to be desired. This article goes through and explains how those points are not. But let me suggest they would not be a reason that you would not, if you walked yourself in, like Gerald Slendy was also saying, I'm not going to take this mandatory flu vaccine. I'm not going to do it. Well, when they get you tied up, you're going to be given the solution like they did for putting your body into suspended animation. You, you've lost your capacity here in rights, and you don't have anything in your hands or knowledge in order to counter it. So that, that they're not safe will not be important. But you need to understand, if you get ahead of the game, how to be able to show how this in mitigation cannot be the that it's safe or not is a problem because they don't even have again there's no test to find out what they're actually fighting in a nutshell the trial designs are such that the vaccine will get a passing grade even if their efficacy is minimal of course we must also consider vaccine side effects and also uh, written several articles of mounting safety i want you to focus on this story when you read carefully that they're actually the vaccines are set up to mitigate symptoms of the like the they they lower the symptoms they do not address the vac the virus and so it's really not a vaccine it's like an injected in fact i think you would have a, a word in your mouth to say well if all it does is inject if it mitigates the symptoms of stuffy head fever cough condition i can take nyquil thank you very much and that's not a plug for NyQuil, and no, I'm not going to get any money for it. But whatever your 
stuffy head coughing, sneezing rest medicine is. If all, you can look very carefully at what these things are. These are not actually vaccines. They're just made to reduce your symptoms. Well, you can do that with a darn aspirin, too. And here we have the problem. See, COVID has become something when it's nothing. It's just the name. It's, it's the coupe without the motor. It's got no driving force. It's just the name. You can't have a vaccine to stop symptoms. You have to have a vaccine supposedly under that theory if you give it a little bit of air to stop a virus. The infectious agent which is missing in every, every jurisdiction, which is why it's required. In fact, one of, one of someone who sent me some stuff recently, I was like, there's a, some states really have it laid out. It's more, there's actually more you can bring than what I've been noticing from some other states. About five or six things you can bring. There's one state, it's like every paragraph is something they failed. It's on and on and on, which is great for us because it means more. That that state was a lot more diligent and vigilant to make sure that they were really identifying something particularly, not just in generalities, which is essentially how some of the states got got their power because it was so general that no nobody, nobody could st- argue correctly to stop it. They could have, but they didn't. The attorneys didn't. And, and like I said, this is what I'm I'm contributing some effort to try and get that specificity put back in the statute so it doesn't happen. And so, again, you know, people want to know, what do I do? I do kind of, you know, little bits here, little bits there, and all over the place. While I'm yet not affected as well, I, I do know there's effect. So understand what, what Ricola is explaining relative to this. This is not about a vaccine for a virus. This is essentially the vaccines are for symptoms. And you can't take a NyQuil and it's going to make people sick that they can't, that they're stopping these tests, you have to know something seriously wrong with it. If all they're really actually doing is is minimizing symptoms, we could do that over the counter. And I think that tells us something else. The new tyranny, few even recognize. Moving on to the more complexities of how this thing, what this thing is moving to control in you, your society. It's not, it's a not they're usually utilizing that medical preface, that pretext, the pretense the color of a medical crisis, but it's a fraud. There's no reality behind it. They're utilizing computer, wowie, gowie, whatever, to enamor everybody that it's real, but it's not. It's all a um, unicorn, as was so eloquently stated in one word, little word. That's what we're dealing with. And it's someone's idea of unicorn on top of that. The new tyranny few recognize. We're moving now into... Something I've told you was coming years and years ago under, under the great hope of a, a blockchain, and in particular something called Bitcoin. But I told you they were going to move this whole thing from there. Once they get your compliance with it and you work out all the bugs, they're going to move it into reality. It'll never be decentralized or anything you thought about. And likely they're going to remove everything that you relied on, and it'll only be those with official type of currencies. We now see that while the population is in shock from their elaborate Im- implementation of a COVID-19 planetary coup, the deep state is in doubling down on their attack by introducing a new weapon for the totalitarian control. Clearly, the Fed reckons the public is foolish even to believe the Fed's money will actually be free. I don't know how that means anything, but in, in, I think that the, the people are going to be foolish. They have been. They, they have been falling for this, so I don't necessarily agree with its author's view. I agree with the sentiment of being resistant. I'm I'm not so sure that we're going to see the the follow through as a society. I hope we do, but I don't see the evidence yet. I hope something I can say in any broadcast will help move this move us forward and actually stop this. The digital dollar and the Fed's big power grab. It's pretty much universally recognized that authorities use crises to impose emergency powers that become permanent. That wasn't the case up until just recently. The erosion of civil and economic liberties is also sold as necessary for our own good. This is that also that Munchausen syndrome, as he's writing here. He doesn't say that, but I'm telling you we can relate this in different ways. Of course, the accretion of every ever greater power in the hands of a few is uh, is for our own good. Well, how could it be otherwise? 
irony off. In this environment, the emergency powers, it's almost refreshing to find a power grab so blatant that its sheer boldness boggles the mind. I'm talking about the Federal Reserve Fed now, a proposed system of instant payments and digital dollars. This paper from the, and he's got a paper link, the Cle Cleveland Fed describes the system. So if you want to know about how this is, the rationale for the system is twofold. The Fed sees the current automatic clearinghouse payment system used by the banks as too slow and limited. Payments need to be intent instantaneous, and there must be a way to reach unbanked households, the roughly 9 million U.S. households without a bank account. In the current system, stimulus payments couldn't reach these households quickly. So I'm going to end there. You can see a ton of information in this article. He pulls it together really nicely as for exposure. I've talked about the Fed now. I've talked about the digital currency. I've told you they're going to put you this in. He talks about the stimulus checks. That's your universal basic income. This is all in Agenda 2030. This is all into driving you down. This is all into controlling everything you do and put it into a blockchain that they claim is, uh, is untappable, is unchangeable in the hands of the government, in the hands of the moneyed powers. For all of you that will talk so much about against this, you're focusing your energy on the wrong thing, and then you're not focusing your action anywhere. Uh, the World Bank throws full weight behind the Gret reset. Another article. The decade is coming out now. It's just not a question like it was 10 years ago when I was telling you, watch out. I, I agree with the block, not necessarily the blockchain, the Bitcoin idea about having private off this and that and the other payments. Perfect. What they were going to attach it to by their own documents, not so perfect. In fact, horrendous for anybody thinking in, in freedom. For decades, the global elite hid their plans behind environmental extremists, but now they have fully revealed themselves as being the master architects from the very beginning. The World Bank, IMF, and Bank of International Settlements are in coordinated tryst to re reform the planet. It's a, actually transform back, and it's not a reset. As I said, this is the technocracy now. Patrick Wood, excellent information from him. The World Bank has published a report that outlines economic wide actions that facilitate the decarbonization and sustainable development of the world as the world recovers from COVID-19 pandemic, uh, global pandemic. The report aims to help countries align their development paths with the goals of the Paris Agreement on climate change through the long-term strategies that promote climate resilience of food and water systems and energy and transport and cities and among other sectors as all those modernization acts spoke to back in 2010. I'll stop reading there as I move more. Citigroup is slapped with a $400 million fine for doing something uh, so bad it couldn't be spoken out loud as the banks, the money systems who create, create crime are not brought to tow for those crimes where they the crimes are they're not keeping their system into any f fidelity in other words there's no no check and balance and they're putting you into that system that you have no control over in the future boj joins fed and ecb in preparing rollout of digital currency from the fed back in october 10th here a couple of weeks as i was trying to get to this i'm finally getting to it your economic system that they denied and denied and denied is coming out now to be real and your, your common pass, your digital currency, your ability to buy and sell is all hitting the hitting the uh, well hitting the wall <laughs> until you you have to undermine the cause, which is COVID. We talked about the UN. It, it said they agreed it was not uh, COVID is to advance climate change and decarbonization. Uh, Cambodia officially launches digital currency backed by central bank. Okay, so this is happening now. The way to stop it is to take away its impetus. You have to do that locally. Now, I don't know, this is where the habeas is. as local to you as I know of any remedy at law, in equity, in, in equity from common law, that we know that's foundational that should protect us. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. What you would do over there to keep us going and keep the... Uh, Blogcaster available with all the links and you, Jules, UCWipe.tv and Sound Minds and Normalization of Ignorance and Walrus at BitChute and Minds. And thank you very much. I'll be with you next week. Tech Diffs or Nature Willing. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. 
from behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast. This is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.